Beautiful. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, Carol Orzen. Growing up, I never thought that I would become a police officer. But as fate had it, in January of 1983, I was sworn on to the New York City Police Department. September 10th of 2001, I was detective <coughs> working in Brooklyn, and we were out making arrests. So I was out very late, and I got home probably about 4 or 30 in the morning. I climbed into bed, and I told my husband, I'm exhausted. You need to let me sleep, and you need to get the kids to school because I, I can't even think straight right now. So I got myself into bed, and I was sound asleep. Suddenly, I heard my bedroom door fly open, and my husband was yelling, you have to get up. And I popped up, and I looked at him, not very nicely. Didn't I tell you to let me sleep? And he said, no, you have to get up. A plane just hit the World Trade Center. So, of course, I did. I ran downstairs, and I watched it on TV. Uh, I didn't have a cell phone back then, I had a beeper. And when the second plane hit, my beeper started going off, and it was work. And I called and they said, you need to come in. Everybody's mobilized, and we need to be at Liberty on West Street. So I grabbed my police raid jacket, and I put on a pair of boots, not knowing what I really needed or what I was gonna do there. And I grabbed my tent, who happened to be a police officer with me. And we decided that we were gonna get in a car and we were gonna all drive together. We picked up two other people. After the same second plane hit, they shut down every tunnel and every bridge and every highway. And it was only open for emergency responders. So the four of us got in a car. And we started from Staten Island. We had the radio on and so we knew what was going on from the radar reports, and we could see the buildings burning as we drove from Staten Island into Brooklyn, going over the Verrazano Bridge with absolutely nobody on it but us. We got into Brooklyn, and we headed down to the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, where uh, Port Authority checked our ID, and they told us we could continue through the tunnel into Manhattan. <coughs> so we entered this tunnel and we were driving, and ahead of us came a very dark ball. Not knowing what was coming at us, I started screaming, we gotta go back, we gotta go back. But before we could put the car in reverse, this cloud overtook the car and went past us. It threw the four of us into complete darkness that we couldn't see each other in the car. And the noise was so deafening that you couldn't hear yourself screaming. Our two mile drive that should have taken a couple minutes took what seemed like a lifetime. As the rumbling started to slow down a little bit, I could hear my friend in the front, front seat screaming, I'm having a heart attack. I couldn't see him, but I could just about hear him. So I reached across to the front of the car and I put my hand on his shoulder just to let him know that I was there. But all the while I was thinking, am I dead? Is this what death is? Did the tunnel collapse? Did, is there water coming next? <coughs> After sitting there for a very long time, that dark cloud started to slow down and the lights started to appear above us in the tunnel. And we decided we had to get out. So it was time to make our move. So he put the car in drive and put it against the wall. And we started to slowly go out because we couldn't see if there was anybody else in the tunnel and we couldn't see if there was anything <coughs> on the floor in front of us. When we reached um, the end of the tunnel and we stepped out of the car, it was like standing on the moon. Everything was white. There was no, nobody in the street. It was like we were the only people in the world. I remember thinking to myself, things can't get any worse than this. And so we walked out to West Street, 
and we looked up and we realized what had happened. That's when I realized that things got, were going to get a lot worse and it would change my life forever. Thank you.